and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about masking we're going to talk about masking for your airbrush so one of the things that frequently comes up when you're doing airbrushing is you need to mask things off because you don't want to overspray and hit some other part of the miniature uh, because either you're trying to work different colors on or something like that maybe you're trying to do a pattern maybe you're trying to do a ton of things uh, whatever the case airbrushes are not a delicate tool no matter what, no matter how small you make the needle, uh, whether you remove the, uh, the the tip that protect the needle protection tip, you know, which if you remove the little tip on the under airbrush, you'll tend to get a tighter spray pattern. But no matter what, it still is always going to come out with this shape, right? Like it's always a triangle, and so as a result, there's overspray. It simply goes wherever you point it, and so there's always going to be a chance that you spray something else. Hence the need for masking. There's lots of options when it comes to <clears throat> masking, and I wanted to talk about all the things I use, but not just using them, how to use them, because I feel like this is an off-missed part of the discussion. People just say like, well, what do you use to mask? And then people say like, I use Tamiya tape. Okay, great, when, how, why? You know, like there's more to it than that. So anyway, let's get into it. Uh, I'm gonna talk about six different things you can use to mask. Seven, I guess. There is another one. Uh, so here's the first one, you ready? It's your hand. Like, it's just your hand. It's the simplest, easiest one. So you have a miniature and you wanna, you wanna spray over, like I wanna spray this guy's um, like butt or something, but I don't wanna get his skin. The simplest answer, if his arm wasn't down like that, right, is that I would just put my finger like that and spray there. Now, I have a problem there because he's got this little arm down, so I can't do it in this case. But oftentimes it is the case that you can you can get away with that. You can just kind of cover up part of it with your hand and go. If you're just doing something quick, if it isn't like you know you're doing display quality work, fine. You, your hand is a good thing. Wear gloves. Put over your thumb. Done and dusted. Easy peasy. All right. Next easiest in the rotation number two. This is the often overlooked one. My favorite one. Silly putty. Good old silly putty. You remember when you were a child and you put silly putty over newspapers? You remember that if you're old enough that newspapers still existed when you were a kid? Uh, but at any rate, silly putty you can still get online for like a couple dollars. And it's pretty much good forever. Uh, all you do is take the silly putty and I kind of stretch it out some. And then I actually just use my X-Acto and I literally just cut a piece, okay? And then if I wanted to spray this guy's pants, what I would do is I would take the Silly Putty and stretch it and just kinda shape it in there where I want it. And now I can cover his hand and boom, right? And then I can just spray over all that part. And once it's done, you're sure your Silly Putty will get a little paint in it. Oh no! After like a year or two years of doing this, you may have to throw your Silly Putty out and uh, and get a new Silly Putty for $2. But this is like the quickest, easiest masking trick. I love the Silly Putty trick. It's especially good when you're dealing with figures like this where you just want to quickly putty something off, spray, done. Silly Putty doesn't pull the paint off. Um, I've never had it pull paint off. Um, you can push rather hard. I mean, it's if you think about how you use Silly Putty, like I said, you used to do things like push it in the newspapers and you get the, the ink up in the newspaper, but it doesn't pull your paint off your mini. Um, I'll like, oh, I can break his, <laughs> I can break him, but I can't pull paint off. Doesn't matter. That poor ogre, he's been through so many videos. So like, I am really pushing it on there. Nothing, comes right off. No change, no paint. You can see his back muscle in there. So, there you go. Silly putty is a great trick. And then, you know, you have your cut piece, you just push it back together. Ta-da, and there it is. Back in its little egg, and it's happy, and you're done. And next, okay. All right, cool. Silly putty done. Let's talk about tapes. There's lots of different tapes. This is your good old fashioned Scotch, you know, 3M masking tape. 
Uh, not generally recommended, but there are uses for it nonetheless. I'll talk, show you how I in a minute. The problem with good old-fashioned masking tape, despite the fact that it literally has mask in its name, is that its stickiness is so high that it will frequently pull paint. It's often also usually big and we need something smaller than this. So this is like very prone to take paint with it. All right. Um, if you have something like really tightly varnished or if you're trying to do something with over like the plastic, this is fine. Say if you're doing like some big robot where you were doing something over like a really thick primer layer that you then varnished and you were gonna put this over the top, you could probably use big masking tape, like if you're doing a really big job. Um, but in general, I would stay away from masking tape as a general rule. I mean, it'll do the work, you just stand a really high chance of pulling paint up, and that's your nightmare situation. So I tend to use Tamiya tape instead. This is uh, Tamiya masking tape. This is six millimeter right here. They make like a six and a 10 and a couple thinner ones. I actually will often just cut this one and I save the strips. So like here's one where I cut the strip in half. You just, I just literally use my X-Acto to like run it right down the, like I put the piece here on my cutting board. I line it up with the, the lines, right? So I can see the line right down the middle, and then I just take it, cut right down the line, peel it up, and ta-da, you got a half size piece. Now, to me, a tape is great for doing a couple different things. First off, this isn't good to mask like a huge area like I did with the Silly Putty, because this is going to take forever. Even with the 10 millimeter tape, it's going to take a long time. Where to me it tends to be great and where I tend to use it the most is when I want to do things like patterns. So if I have a flat surface and I want to do a pattern on it, um, so for example, if I want to do like a hazard stripe, right, I'll then slice this down further, put a piece across here, cut it, put a second piece, put a second piece, and so on, right? And then I've got my built-in hazard stripe. Um, this is also good for simply holding other things on, which you'll see in a moment. Um, this is good if you have a very small thing, like uh, let's say I was trying to to block off, you know, just his hand or something because I wanted to spray above it. You can, you know, very quickly lay down a piece like that. You can cover the hand. I could cover above the hand and then spray the thing in the middle. All right, I'd probably use two full-size pieces for this, but you get the idea. So if I was just trying to spray that little piece in the middle, right? Um, but it's really great for especially like vehicle work, patterns, um, if you're trying to mask off windows or things like that where you have a straight edge, um, panel lines, all those sorts of things where you really, where you have a flat or a hard edge that you need to mask on. The Tamiya tape really, really excels in that case. Uh, as a side note, after I've sprayed it once or twice, twice I save these. Okay, like literally, I, key, I have a bunch of little tiny pieces of tape, you can't see them, but they're over on the side of my desk, like right here, like I literally attach it to the corner of my desk. And I just keep them there. Um, one quick tip on Tamiya, it will tend not to pull paint up, but it can do it. Here is a trick how you avoid it. You ready? So we have our piece of Tamiya tape. You take the tape, you get the back of your hand or your arm or something like that, push it against your hand, peel it up. Push it against your hand, peel it up. One or two times and you will sort of, your skin oil will break down a little bit of the adhesive stickiness and you stand much less of a chance of actually then pulling anything up. And it'll still stick, like if you push it down, it's not gonna stick to my hand because it's not meant to. But if I do this a few times, I sort of I sort of get rid of most of the stickiness and then it'll still stick to a nice solid surface that I put it down on. All right? So easy peasy. And then we easy peasy lemon squeezy and then we tend not to have to worry about it peeling up paint. So I can push it on there nice and hard, take it off. No paint. Okay? So there's a couple tricks for Tamiya tape. Now, masking tape and Tamiya tape gone. Silly putty, get out of here. You already had your time. Stop trying to hog the limelight, silly putty. Here's my, my next one. 
saran wrap. Good old fashioned saran wrap from your, you know, kitchen or whatever. This is just a big piece of plastic. Uh, this is what I use, like right now I'm working on a base. And so when I need to mask off this whole base, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna wrap my plastic around it. My saran wrap as it were. Just kinda really get that on there. Okay. So now I've got it wrapped like I'm going to ship it almost. And then you remember I said that masking tape can sometimes be good for holding on other things. Well now I'm not putting it directly on the surface. This is where it excels because it's got a nice big flat wide and it sticks strong. So I just put my masking tape on there to hold the two pieces together and I'm good to go. I can also take a little bit of my Tamiya tape and I can run it right along the edge. So that way if I have an edge where the saran wrap didn't lay quite perfectly, I can go ahead and do that. And then that'll help hold the edge down. All right, so like, so this doesn't pull, so it doesn't, uh, you know, kind of get blown back if I'm working on paint or whatever. I can basically just run a nice piece of Tamiya tape right over the edge there at the top. And there we go. And so now this will stick nice and clean and I won't have to worry about it falling down. I won't have to worry about it, you know, blowing back if I airbrush this, which I'm going to because I need to, you know, paint the top and whatnot. And everything will be nice and secure. So I can move that around and nothing happens. I just keep a big piece of plastic like this in my uh, airbrush storage supplies. As you can see, I've used this one many times. You can see all the paint and everything on it. Once I'm done, just pull it off, put it away. I Yes, I am that cheap to use a single piece of saran wrap for all time. Waste not, want not, kids. All right, so that's that. Uh, now let me give you another fun one. And we all, we wear gloves when we're airbrushing, but what do you do when you've got the old glove? Well, let me tell you what, I keep it. Not all of them, I don't keep a ton of old broken gloves lying around, that would be gross and weird. But I just generally keep an, like a glove. I, um, this video really makes me sound like a hoarder, I'm realizing. Um, but I, I'm not, I throw my old gloves away when they rip and stuff. Uh, but I keep one. And the nice part about these is I'll just use the fingers. Like if I need to map all, mask off an area like I would with my finger, but I need my hand, right? I can do the same thing with a glove. So I can just kind of wrap it around there. You know, rubber gloves are meant to stretch, right? So I can just stretch it around there and then still hold it. The little fingers on the gloves tend to make excellent little wraps for your uh, for your minis. And again, it's nice and soft. You know, you're normally handling your minis with gloves on, so it's obviously not going to tear paint up. It's a quick, easy thing. It's easier than using your hand directly because you can actually stretch it out and pull it flat and stuff like that. So a glove is just another good trick. Uh, so there you go. That's masking. If you want to see this actually in practice, oh, I'm sorry, I have one more. The last one that I have, okay, is, I, I apologize, I almost forgot my last one. The last one I have is these sorts of things. Uh, these are like, you know, templates, okay? You can mask with templates. Um, these are from Fallout Hobbies, which I really like, because Fallout Hobbies, when you get one of their their sticker template packs, so you can see what this looks like. This isn't really like a product review video. Oh, sorry. There we go. I don't know if that's gonna show up or not. Probably not. And that is very just white on white. Well, when you get it, there you go, I'll do it this way. You can see I get both the template to spray the leaf, but also then the leaf. That's really not gonna show. There's a leaf on there, trust me. <laughs> and the point is, is that you can mask with either side of it. That's why I like these. Um, because I can create the sort of positive or the void. And so you can lay that down. And I'll say when you're using these little templates, it has to be a very flat surface, right? Um, you cannot 
you cannot do this with something that is uh, with something that's rounded or curved or bumpy. It's just not going to work. Okay. Now, if you uh, assuming it's not bumpy or rounded or weird, and you got a nice flat surface, then what you can do is lay down your template. Okay. That was still full of water. Let's try that again. Always test on the back of your hands first, kids. How many times have I said that in videos and then promptly didn't do it? So. There we go. Now, when you use a template, much like with masking tape, you always want to let it dry completely. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to make you sit here and watch paint dry. But effectively, then, you want to just pull it off nice and gently. And then you get a nice little template. Just that easy. Easy peasy. All these things are good for masking and different purposes. Obviously, you want to use this last one when you're trying to create the design that the template has. I will also point out that you can do things like combine the two uh, together to create different effects. Like I've mixed the masking tape or the Tamiya tape with the templates to build bigger shapes out. So also a possibility. Okay. All of these things you can use to mask and all of them are perfectly valid. The key is that you want to make sure you're matching the right tool to the right job. So if you have a simple quick thing you're trying to mask off, if it's an extended arm that's in the way or something like that, your finger or you know the finger of an old glove or something like that is fine. If you've got a curvy shape that's kind of bumpy and very difficult to get at, then good old silly putty could be your best friend. If you're trying to do some straight lines, have a flat surface, are masking off windows, panels, or other straight flat surfaces, Tamiya tape is a great way to go. If you have a very large curvy surface, like you're trying to keep most of a miniature safe, right? Or you're trying to do a big surface, then good old plastic wrap is the way to go. Just make sure you tape it down. This is a great place to bring your masking tape out and make sure it's nice and solidly attached, right? And if you're trying to do a specific template, again, there's all sorts of templates out there on the market. I really like the stuff from Fallout Hobbies. Um, as I said, this isn't a product review video, but hey, if you're looking for somebody who supplies them, there you go. They're pretty great. Uh, and that's a fun way to get specific patterns and shapes. So, there you go. That's masking for your airbrush. Uh, play around with it. There's lots of neat things you can do when you combine these together, by the way. Um, you can do fun things like use the putty in small amounts and flatten it out and then spray over the top of it to create neat like galaxy patterns or voids or in things if you're trying to do like a space thing. Um, you can use different parts of the, the Tamiya tape crisscrossing. Like you can do a black and then crisscross it over, spray it all kind of white and you get really neat like lattice work effects. The point is is that it only takes your, it's, your imagination is the limit when it comes to masking this stuff off and how you layer the paint. Um, just give it a shot and uh, hopefully this will help you mask things off and use your airbrush more cleanly and effectively. But there you go. That's all there is to it. Masking is fun, simple, quick, and, uh, and can help you get more mileage out of your airbrush because you can use it more often. So there it is. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked that, hey, give it a like. That's always appreciated. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. There are new videos here every week. Uh, if you have any requests for future topics, go ahead and feel free to pop those in the comments below. I always love suggestions from people and I'm always happy to help. But as always, I appreciate you watching this one and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.